Hello, I just want to talk to you about this um, end times dream I had uh, last night, which to me is really, really powerful because it, it speaks of the times that we're in and the scripture that um, goes with it is Galatians 6 verse 7, which says, and I'll read it out of the New um, Living Translation, it says, don't be misled, you cannot mock the God of justice, you will always harvest what you plant, which is true, you reap what you sow, more or less is what it's saying. I like the, how the New Living Translation puts it. So you will always harvest what you plant. <laughs> so it's like, don't plant a bad seed. Of, you know, if you don't want a bad harvest out of it, don't plant a bad seed. But the end times dream that I had um, was I was with, I was in this um, big building in a big place, like a, just like one of those big um, convention center type of places that's really big that holds a lot of people in it. And there was a bunch of people there. And I was ministering to them about, um, the God's glory, how he doesn't share it with anybody, how, you know, all his glory belongs to him. You know, it doesn't belong to man, but it belongs to God. He doesn't share his glory. It belongs to him. And, you know, I was, I was telling them not to mock God, you know, because after I, I was ministering to them, they started mocking him and, and, and saying all these crazy things. And I warned him, I told him, you better not warn, you better not mock God because his word says that he won't be mocked. You know, whatever you reap, whatever you plant, you're going to, you know, you're going to reap a harvest from what you plant, from whatever seed you plant, whether it's good or evil, you're going to reap a harvest from it. But they wouldn't listen. They just kept laughing and mocking and, and, and saying what they wanted to say and doing what they wanted to do. And it just reminded me that, you know, that that's the times that we're in. You know, it really, it, it's the times that we're in. People are already doing that. You know, they're already mocking God, thinking they're going to get away with it, and they're already, you know, doing the things that they shouldn't be doing, and not listening to God, and not taking heed to what He says, and not taking heed to His word and to His warnings that He's given people, and, you know, they're going to reap the harvest from that. It's really also, um, because it's like a two-part dream, but it basically was, you know, about the end times, and about the times that we're in now, and about... God not being mocked and about, you know, God's judgment falling on the people that are disobedient and that refuse to listen to God and refuse to listen to what he tells them and to take heed to what he says. Basically, that's that's what it was like, you know, the other dreams that I've been having lately are. And that just, you know, really shows me, you know, and, and hopefully would help other people see too that, you know, he means business, you know, that his, his judgment is, is coming on the people, you know, and coming on the church as it has been and it's just getting it, it's crazy but people just ain't taking heed and god's giving them all these warnings he's giving them all these chances he's giving them all this time to, to turn from what they're doing and turn from their wicked ways and then turn back to him but they're not listening they're not taking heed to what he's saying they're taking it you know lightly they're taking it like it doesn't mean anything and it does it means a lot because you know god's not going to be mocked you know whatever a man sows they're going to reap it you know they're going to reap the harvest from that whether it's a good seed you know, doing for good and doing for his glory, or it's a bad seed, you know, going against what God says. But either way, they're going to reap what they sow. And, you know, that's just, that's that's how it works. You know, that's how God's word works. You know, we reap what we sow, whether it's good or evil. And, you know, people, they, they sometimes tend to only see the good side of it instead of the bad, which, of course, we don't want to see the bad side of things. I'm not saying to look at the negative side of it, but we have to look at both sides. You know, we have to see it from, from both sides perspectives because you know we reap what we sow on the good side and the bad side so we have to be careful with the seeds we sow but really that's what that's saying it's just saying to beware you know to be careful of, of the seeds that you sow and make sure that you know you're doing what God wants you to do and, and you're, you got the discernment to know the difference between what he wants you to do and what the enemy's trying to throw at you because you know in the in the the other dream you know that was connected to this one that I had after that was about you know, warning people about the temptation of the enemy, how he's tempting people to go against what God says, and he's tempting them to, to mock him and to and to not take heed to the warnings that God is throwing at them, you know, to do what they want to do and to, and to steal God's glory and not to, you know, let God have the glory that belongs to him. And we don't do that, you know. We can't steal God's glory. That belongs to him. That's his glory because we can't do anything aside from him, you know. That's what his word tells us. Aside from him, we can do nothing, so... That's just really a warning. The two dreams were like connected to each other. It was like a part one and a part two type of thing. But it just shows that, that God's, he, he's, he's 
you know, trying to wake people up. He's, he's shaking things up, and, he, and he's trying to shake people up and, and, and get them to realize that his return is close and that they need to get their lives right and get themselves in line with him and in line with what he says and in line with his word and to take it seriously because it's not a, a joking matter. It's something to take serious. And a lot of times people take it too lightly. They don't take it like they should. They take it with a grain of salt like it don't mean nothing, but it does. And... You know, they're going to reap the harvest from that. They're going to reap whatever seed that they've sown. They're going to reap the harvest from it. But we have to be careful of the seeds that we sow. You know, we have to make sure that we're doing what God wants us to do. We can't just do anything. We have to use discernment. Because a lot of times, you know, people will say things or try to, to get us to do things or go in one direction or the other. And we got to make sure that's where God wants us to go. we got to make sure that that's where he's leading us to go. Because if it's not, then... You know, we're going in the wrong direction. We're getting off the path that he's, he's put us on. And we don't want to do that. We don't stay on the path that he's he has us on. And we got to use our discernment. Because in these days, we need it. <laughs> we need a sharper and stronger and deeper discernment. Because with the things that are coming at us, we have to, we have, to have it. Because otherwise, <laughs> a lot of people sadly have and are falling away because of that. You know, they don't have the discernment to tell the difference between... What God's having them do and where the enemy's trying to tempt them and lead them to go astray and lead them to go the wrong way. But it's just, it really shows me how serious God is with this. That it's not a, a joking matter and a lot of people are taking it like, oh, it don't mean nothing. Oh, we got all the time in the world. And it just really leads back to not just to salvation, but, you know, to, to getting our lives right with God and, and, you know, doing what he wants us to do and be about doing his business and about doing what he's put us here to do because we have a purpose and we're supposed to fulfill that purpose and do the, the things that he's called us to do and there will be mockers and there will be naysayers and there will be a lot of people that, that go against it but we can't allow that to keep us from it you know we can't allow that to keep us from doing what God wants us to do we have to keep pressing into him and just you know doing what we know that God wants us to do and not not allow people or the enemy you know, to pull us away from that. We have to we have to stick with it because these are serious times that we're in and it's you know, it's with all these dreams that I'm having, it just shows me that God's really trying to press on his people and trying to get them to wake up. You know, not just the church, but he's trying to get his people in general, even those that are falling away and those that have went their own way and, and rebelled against him. He's trying to wake them up and show them how serious this is. And it's not a, a joking and a laughing matter. It's something that people need to take seriously. And realize that God takes it seriously. And if he takes it seriously, then we need to. You know, we need to, to take heed to it and to, to listen. And to walk in obedience to him. Because otherwise, it ain't going to be a good outcome. You know, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot by not doing that. You know, and, and people just, sadly, they just, more and more every day. It just seems like they're just falling away from him. And just falling away and going their own way. And it's sad. It's sad to, to see, but you know. It doesn't come without sacrifice, you know. Following God does not come without sacrifice. It takes a lot of sacrifice to follow him and, and to do the things he's called us to do. It takes great sacrifice. It ain't something that, that we should take lightly. It's something we should take seriously because it takes great sacrifice. And not a lot of people, you know, are willing to, sadly, to, to take that sacrifice and to, and to take it seriously. To start following, I should go up just a little bit. There we go. Just like he's falling down there we go sorry about that <laughs> i don't know what keeps moving but that's something that we should take seriously you know we should we should really take heed to it and i hope it's an eye opener to a lot of people especially those that have fallen away because i know there's a lot of people that have fallen away and there's a lot of people that are beginning to lose hope and that's what the enemy's counting on he's playing on that because he knows that his time is short like i've said before a lot of times his, he knows his time is short so he's gonna, he's gonna throw all the curveballs he can and people try to get them to fall away and try to get them to give up and, and to think that God's not working on their behalf. But just because we don't see it in the natural don't mean he ain't working because he is. God's working behind the scenes. You know, we, we don't always see everything he's doing. But that's where, you know, it comes in to walk by faith and not by sight. Like I said in the previous video, it says in Second Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. We don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith and trusting in God and knowing that, you know, he's leading us and guiding us into all his truth. So, 
we need to to really just walk by faith. I mean, in these days, that's what it takes. It's going to take that. It's going it's to take complete faith and trust in God to, to get to where he's taking us. We can't walk by what we see because we walk by what we see. People are going to be falling away all over the place more and more, which they are, sadly. But it'll increase, you know, with, with people not listening, not taking heed to what he's saying. It's just going to be more and more people falling away. And we don't want to do that. We want to walk by faith and know that if God, you know, says it in his word and he's promised it to us, that it's ours. We just have to receive it by faith and know that his promises are true and that he wants us to have the things that he wants us to have. So in order for us to get that, we have to, to walk in obedience. But I pray that this word um, blesses you and I pray that it helps open the eyes of those that that may not see the truth and may not see the whole truth and maybe, you know, kind of on the limbo there not wondering what to do or not knowing you know kind of thinking and getting you know tempted by the enemy which he can put it on thick and he is i mean don't don't be discouraged be encouraged you know know that the more the enemy comes at you <laughs> that you're on the right track you know more or less that's your indication you're on the right track you know the more and more he comes at you <laughs> the more and more he throws things at you that's your your total indication knowing that's your confirmation, I should say. It's your confirmation knowing that you're on the right track because that's what he does. He won't, you know, like I said before, he won't mess with you unless you're a threat to him. If you're a threat to him, he'll mess with you. <laughs> and we're a threat to him. So the more we, we're a threat to him, the more he's going to come at us. But we got God's word to, to fight and to, and to use as our weapon to fight against that. So I pray that this encourages you and helps you to see that God means business. You know, these these days are some crazy times we live in. There's crazy things going on in this world, but we can't be moved by that. We can't be moved by what we see. You know, we have to keep our eyes on God and keep our focus on Him. Don't be moved by the things that you see on the news or the things that you see other people doing. Just be moved by what you see, you know, by what, what God's Word says. You know, not by what you see, but what God, God's Word says and what, what He says about you because that's, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the true truth. You know, what, what other people say isn't always the truth, but what God says we know is the truth. So I hope that this encourages you and blesses you and helps you to see that God's been in the business. I'm telling you, with all these dreams that, that I've been having lately, and they're all aiming towards the same thing. And, you know, and I, I've seen that. It, it's all aiming towards salvation and then towards his return and then towards the times that we're living in. I mean, really, it's all it's all centered around that. And that is a, a huge indication that his return is close. So we need to to get serious and get our lives right with God and, and you know, get to being about his business and get to being about doing what he wants us to do. And don't allow people and, and the enemy to sidetrack you and to get you off from the path that God put you on. But I pray that this does bless you and helps you to to see, you know, see the truth and see that God loves you and he's on your side, you know. And like I said before, don't don't fight battles that don't belong to you, you know, let God fight it, because a lot of times we fight battles that don't belong to us, and that we shouldn't fight, and that's when, you know, we, we wear our shells out <laughs> by fighting a battle that God never intended us to fight, so don't fight the battles that don't belong to you, only fight the ones that, that God wants you to fight, with his help, of course, because he's always with us, so we know that we don't fight alone, we're not on the battlefields by ourselves, He's he's got our back, so... <laughs> We're in good hands with him. We don't have to worry about that. But I pray that this word helps you and blesses you and helps to encourage you to, to not give up. You know, even though we face hard times and even though you face things that ain't always easy to go through, know that God's with you. You know, you're not facing it by yourself. You're not facing those things by yourself. You're facing it with him. So with him, we can do all things. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But I pray this blesses you and, and encourages you and helps you not to give up. And um, I pray that, that it really, it's really an eye-opener to those that, that have fallen away and those that have, you know, kind of slipped away from God. Not I wouldn't say completely, hopefully they wouldn't have done that, but even if they have, I pray that it helps them turn back to Him because, you know, like I, I always say, don't run from the only one that can help you. <laughs> run to Him, not from Him. <laughs> Because he's the only one that can truly help you. So don't run away from him, but run to him. And allow him to help you. And allow him to lead and guide you. And all his truth. But until next time, I pray that y'all are blessed. And encouraged. 
and I will um, leave all my information in the description box below with my my GoFundMe account and all that stuff if people want to sow a seed into my ministry you're welcome to do so and I will see y'all next time and until then y'all be blessed and have a good evening